What's up everybody? David here and on today's episode of Firecast, I'm going to be covering anonymous authentication. And just as a reminder, this is just one episode, an entire playlist on Firebase and the web, so you should subscribe to that to get notified every time we drop a new video. But today we're going to learn anonymous authentication, which is personally my favorite form of authentication because you can actually log in a user without getting any information from them. With no email password, they don't have to do any OAuth, you know, redirect. You can just click a button and log them in. And then once they're ready to become a real user, you can just merge them into a real account. So let's see how we get started. So just like always, when we're working with Firebase Authentication, we're gonna be working in this Firebase.auth namespace. So for anonymous authentication, it's pretty simple. We call the method auth.signin anonymously. And what you might notice here is that there aren't any parameters to this function. And that's because there's nothing required from the user. So with email and password, we have to provide an email and a password, but for auth sign in anonymously, there's no parameters at all. And while social login also doesn't require any parameters, it does require the user to go to the social sign in screen and then back to your app, whereas this all happens inside the context of your app. So what good is anonymous authentication for? Well, like you probably know already, it is great for just getting guest users into your app. And once they decide they want to stick around, you can link them to an identified account, like with an email and password, or with a social provider like Google. So to log out, we can just do what we usually do, which is auth.signout. So auth sign in anonymously will return to us a promise. And the nature of a promise is, is it allows us to asynchronously resolve the user's data. But a promise only fires off one time. So if we want to monitor authentication state in real time, we need to use the method auth on auth state changed. And this takes in a callback. And this callback fires off every single time there is a change in our authentication state. You know, hence on auth state changed. So if no one is logged in, this user parameter will be null. But if someone is logged in, it will be populated with the current user. So let's go and do a little demo app to see how all three of these methods work together. So right here, I have my demo app to the left and I have my code editor to the right. So what I have right here is a login button, which you can see right here in the DOM, and an unseen log out button which is right here in the DOM. And it has this class of hide, which keeps it hidden. So what I want to do is I want to add a click listener to log in and then be able to log the user in, which will trigger the visibility of the logout button. So I want to go into my app.js, which is sourced right here. Inside of app.js, I have my Firebase project configured, which you can get all this information in the Firebase console. So now that it's set up, I want to get the elements from the DOM. So I'm just going to get btn login and btn logout. So now I want to add the click listener to this login button. So click event listener, btn login, add event listener, click, and then do the callback function. And inside of this callback function, this is where I'm going to call auth.signin anonymously. So refresh the page and pull up the console, and now I'm going to click Login Anonymously, and oh, we have an error. So this error says the given sign-in provider is disabled for this Firebase project. Enable it in the Firebase console. Well, that's pretty easy. So here in the Firebase console, I'm in my project inside the Auth tab, and I want to go over here and click Sign In Method. So click that, and you can see we have email and password enabled, but I'm also going to go and enable anonymous. And with that enabled, I can refresh and click the button one more time, and nothing happens. Which makes sense, because all we're doing is, is calling sign in anonymously. We're not actually getting that user data back. So to get that user data, I'm going to add the authentication state listener. So firebase.auth.onAuthStateChanged, which we know takes in a function that returns a Firebase user. So let's log that user to the console. And let's refresh the page. 
And just like that, our user is logged in to the console because we had clicked this button earlier. And I'm going to open up this user. And there are two properties which are very interesting. The first is is anonymous. So this actually provides you a property to determine whether your user is an anonymous user. And in this case, it's obviously true. And the second is the UID. So this is the unique identifier for this Firebase user. So this is what you use in security rules. So a lot of times people will ask, why do I even need an anonymous user? I can just save their data to the real-time database, and then once they want to be an authenticated user, I can just create that account for them. So while you can do that, it's not necessarily secure because anyone can go and modify that data. But if you authenticate them anonymously, you can then protect their data even if they don't have an identified account yet. So now that we are getting the user to the console, let's display the logout button. So now I'll check if the Firebase user exists, we're logged in, so let's remove the class of hide from the logout button. Else, let's take the logout button and add the class of hide because the user doesn't exist, therefore we're logged out. So now I'm going to refresh the page and we can see the logout button. So let's go and click it and nothing happens because there isn't an event wired up to the logout button. So right here I'm going to add a click event listener for logout and just clarify that this one's for login. And then I'm going to say btn logout add event listener click then provide the callback function. So inside of here when I log out all I have to do is call firebase.auth.signout. So I'm going to go and refresh this page. Now I'm going to click log out and we're logged out. Log in and now we can log out and really I could just do this all day. And just like that, we have implemented anonymous authentication into our app. So that's everything you need to know to get started with anonymous authentication. And if you want to learn more, make sure you check out the docs, which the link is in the description. And also, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date with all the content that we post here on the Firebase channel. And before I go, I have a question for you. What are you going to use anonymous authentication for? So just let us know in the comments. So that's all for today. I will see you all later.